Welcome back. In this quick start video, we're going to look at using MIDI and chord tracks to control VST instruments. Now you can add a VST instrument by clicking on the plus button or right mouse clicking in the track list or adding an instrument in the VST instrument tab in racks. You can add a blank VST instrument or you can click on the browse button to bring up all of the different types of instruments that are available. On the left hand side, you'll see the instruments and the content packs and then further over towards the right hand side, you've got different filters that you can use to choose the appropriate sound. I can select piano and then select different attributes or colors. I've selected the sound I want and that sound will load up with the VST instrument on the right hand side. Now it's a matter of hitting record and recording something. I'm just playing some very basic chords. Don't ever feel limited by your ability to play a particular instrument because I'm going to show you a way of not just expanding what's actually being played but also expanding the chords in a composition. To start with I'm going to go and add a track. So once again we go to the plus button on the track list and we're going to add a chord track. Now I'm going up to project and I'm selecting chord track, create chord symbols. Cubase will ask me how it wants me to analyze the data in that MIDI event and I'm just going to hit OK. And now I'm setting it up to monitor those chords or the new chords on the piano track. Cubase is telling me which chords I've played and it's also giving me suggestions based on what might sound good inside of this composition. Even better than that, I can set up all of my tracks to follow chord tracks so that they change any time I change a chord. Over in the track inspector, I'm clicking on the chord tab and I'm selecting chords and scales from follow chord track. Any VST instrument, MIDI file or track, or even monophonic audio track can be set to follow these chords. Let's now make some changes to some other chords. I'm clicking on the C and I'm going down to the proximity section of the chord assistant and choosing another chord. And as soon as I do, the MIDI data in that piano track changes. So instead of an A minor, I'm choosing another B minor. Or if I don't like the sound of that, I can choose another chord, a G for instance. And I'm just using the left and right cursor buttons on my computer keypad to go through and make changes to this chord track. It's not just a great way to compose music, it's an excellent way to expand your musical horizon. So in other words, create something you wouldn't normally create. If I want extra chords, I just grab my pencil tool, draw them in where I want them, and then once again, choose the chords from the chord assistant. This is a really quick overview, but you can also go in and change different voicings and different styles of performers. For instance, a piano player to a guitar player. We've still got a very simple idea here, so let's carry on by adding another VST instrument. This time, I'm selecting production grooves, and I'm going to find some beats that might work with this project. It's all about trying something different, so I'm just selecting something randomly. Once the instrument loads, I can open up the instrument editor inside of the racks window. You can create your own grooves by recording them in with a MIDI device or drawing them in. However, Groove Agent SE comes with some great patterns. So I've gone to the pattern bank and I've hit play and I'm just previewing different patterns by clicking on them with a the mouse. When I find one I like, I just drag and drop it straight over into the track. I'm going to pick up on the square on the right hand side of the event and drag it over to copy and paste it. I really want this idea to build dynamically, so I'm going back to add another VST instrument and I'm going to find another preset. Once I hit add track, a new Groove Agent SE instrument loads up and it's a matter of repeating the process to find something that works in the track. If I jump over to the pattern tab, once again, I can preview different grooves. That works, so I'm dragging and dropping it over into the track. I said that we were using MIDI data to control VST instruments, and down the bottom you can see the MIDI data in the lower zone. But at the moment, it's hard to figure out what notes relate to which instrument in the drum kit. So I'm going up to my inspector, and Groove Agent SE has custom designed drum maps for all of the presets. I'm selecting the correct drum map, now if I go back and click on the MIDI event, down the bottom we've got the drum editor, which makes it so much easier to edit drums and custom design our own groove. 
I want to use this kick drum line to create a bass line. So I'm right mouse clicking on the first one. I'm going to select everything of an equal pitch at the same octave. Now that's selected all of the kick drums in this event. Next, right mouse click, edit, copy. So we've copied all of the kick drums. It's time now to find an instrument that I can use to create a bass line. So I'm using my filters to find a bass. And as soon as I've found a bass, I just hit add track. If I go to the start of my project, I can hit Control or Command V, and this will paste those kick drum notes in onto the Retrolog track. There's only one problem, and that is that they're playing that one note. So we need to make life a bit more interesting. I'm editing, copying, and pasting this event so it goes for the full duration. Chord track will affect everything inside of a track. Now it's over to the Chord tab to select Chords. It's going to analyze what's inside of the track and then immediately change the data to fit with the chords. Now it's a matter of finding some sort of setting that works for me. Okay, there we have a bass line without even playing a note in anger. In a matter of minutes, we've used the chord track MIDI data and VST instruments to further produce this very simple idea. Now the great thing about creating in Cubase is you're never locked into an idea. And to really give you an example of MIDI data controlling VST instruments, I'm clicking on the piano track and I'm changing the routing of this MIDI data to a completely different VST instrument. So I've selected Pad Shop. Now I can select a preset and I've changed the texture from that piano sound to a really warm atmospheric pad sound. Just that one change really changes the colour of this track. Speaking of the colour of the track, in the next video, we're going to delve into some basic mixing techniques. I'll catch you there.